Hey class, alright, so today we're going to talk about how we turn a slab roller into a printing press. Okay, so on today's lesson, we're going to take this tr this typical slab roller and we're going to use it as a printing press today. And the reason we're doing this is because there was a, there was an ongoing thread on Facebook and somebody was asking, hey, what should we get if we can get a slab roller or do you get a printing press? I say go with the slab roller as the purchase because you can use it for both pretty easily. I got Bob in the background helping me out today. Okay, so the first thing you guys want to do on your printing press, the reason that you're going with this is that you can change the depth of the roller bars that you got in the middle here on the press. Now on the side here, you have a level guide to tell you how high that depth needs to be. Now the reason that we're doing this is so that you can put some slats, some boards in between to use as the printing place where you're gonna put your printing block and your ink and your paper and all that kind of good stuff. It's gonna go in between the wood and not actually on the slat slab rolling table. The reason that you're doing that is that this surface here is really for clay. It's kind of built for clay. Uh, so we're going to use a different surface for printing and keep them separate that way. That makes you to where you don't have to worry about cleaning every last nook and cranny that's on the slab press, um, that's on the slab roller, for before you start doing a print as a printing press. That way you have two different areas without having to cross contain. Okay, now on my slab roller, I've got this uh, gauge here and it goes all the way up to, it goes almost to three inches all the way down here. Now using that as my measurement guide, I'm going to use several different stacks of wood, slats of wood to give me that depth so that as I put my plates through that I have an even press all the way across. All right, so what I've got here is some is my slat. So I have a press board, um, it's like seven feet long. Uh, it doesn't have to be that long, but make it to the size that you're actually going to work with. So if it needs to be, I wouldn't probably do more than three feet in length uh, because you really won't need much more than that as you're putting, you know, one student work through each time. Now, your bottom board is that press board because it's it's thick, it's dense, it can take a beating. And that's what you kind of want to have at the bottom layer because the bottom layer is going to have that the most amount of weight pressed onto it. Now the top layer uh, that is going through the press is this thin poplar sheeting that I've got. Uh, again, it's like seven feet long. Uh, use what you need to use, uh, but you want to keep a thin one up here because the paper is going to be placed on the back of this side. So your press plate is going to be placed on this side. Your paper piece is going to be placed on this side. But as you're building a space on this bottom section, you want to make sure that you can put the paper wherever you need to put the paper, but the bottom section stays the same all the way across. It's gonna make it to where your printing, it always comes out the correct way every single time. Now most printing presses have a nice little grid on top of their tabletop, where you can line up your paper, you can line up your block, and as it goes through, you know everything's lined up properly. This is kind of the same thing, but you're doing a reversal of it, where you're building your own frame uh, so if you've ever done any matting, you shouldn't have any issues with that. You're going to line up how big your plate is and you're going to put little uh, bare pieces in there to where, and I'm going to show you that in a second, uh, so that as the printing, as the plate goes through and as the paper goes through on top of it, everything stays lined up uh, evenly on the piece. Now, understanding the depth of the plate surface that you're, uh, space that you're going to be using, using a just a regular ruler, you're going to add the bottom plate, the, the you're gonna add your bottom board, which is gonna be your base, your printing plate, which is gonna be the next one, and then your paper, really don't need to measure that because all paper is gonna be about the same thickness, it's like super thin. Uh, throw in a millimeter if you need if you need an accurate measurement. And then the top board, can't remember board, got lost on board. Um, and the last thing that you're gonna do, as you're pushing this through your slab roller, the canvases that come with the slab roller, you wanna use one on the top of the surface and the bottom of the surface. The reason that you're doing that is because this is what's gonna grab onto those rollers. Because the rollers have this nice, because these rollers have this nice thin meshing that is used to grab a hold of the canvas. And you're gonna have it grab a hold of the canvas, pull the canvas with the pieces of wood through your press and everything comes out printed on the other side. Working on our little setup here, we have our baseboard with a cloth underneath it so that has the, so it can go through the press. Up here I've got a couple extra paint stirrers. I got these from Home Depot. Uh, really handy to get in the long ones. 
Uh, what you're gonna do is line them up. You can glue them down just so that they're working as your guide. The reason that we're doing this is so that when we put our um, print block on here, they should be about the same thickness. Now you can find different versions of these. You can get thinner slats. Um, kind of just go down the trim section at Home Depot to find what's the same thickness as the plate that you're working on. And then make like a little mini jig to where as this goes through, this is keeping this locked in and the paper can go along right on top of it. Also, you can take a Sharpie and put notches to where your paper is properly measured for the center of your jig as it goes through that press. Once you have the bottom board on, come by with your top board. Once you have your top board in the place where you want it, you'll put the other bit of canvas on the top. Press everything in to as it goes, then use your large wheel to drag, pushing the piece across. Now, if you want to, I'd also have a secondary student or helper on the backside to hold the board steady and, and feed it, help feed it through the machine, everything going together. So working, this will get better than working in teams. That way you're ensuring that all the students are, are participating. It's not just one student doing the whole job by themselves. Now, one other option for you is to use some scrap mat board. Instead of using the wood and the planks to press through, just use some mat board. You're going to have to use more of it because this is going to go, uh, it's going to get deteriorated over time just because as it goes through the press. If you're watering down your paper where you're actually soaking the paper so that it is sizing better as it goes through the press, you are going to have to kind of deal with more saturation issues with the mat board, but it works the same principle. So set up your mat board, make a jig using the same principles that we that we discussed and cut your mat board thicknesses, build those levels up to where you have like a little shift, uh, a makeshift jig area to where you can actually put into put your plate in the center, put the paper on top, put another piece of uh, mat board on top of that. Make sure you're always running it through the canvases. That ensures that the um, the spindles as they're pulling the pieces through if it's just the spindles on the mat board over time the spindles are going to eat into the mat board and it's going to clog up stuff inside on your rollers and that's not going to be good for the clay it's not going to be good for the the print as you're going through you're going to have a little bit of unevenness because it's going to rip and tear into the mat board uh, so make sure that you're using the canvases in between i always stress trying to get extra canvases at all possible because as you're using clay uh, as they get moisture on the clay, it sticks to the canvases. So you want to be able to cycle those out so that you don't run into the issue of having uh, wet canvases as you're trying to make your pieces and then you run to hazards that way. Okay class, I hope that was a helpful tutorial on how to get the most out of the materials that you guys use. If at all you guys have any questions, please raise your hand down in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer those questions. Otherwise, as always, I will see you guys next class. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, subscribe and share uh, on all the various platforms because that does help me out a lot. Other than that class, I will see you guys later. See you guys. Bye.